Hi everyone, welcome back to another step-by-step -step embryology. We're picking up with week two of gestation. Last time we talked about the zygote through blastocyst stage of gestation, and we left off right before implantation, and now we are picking up to talk about implantation specifically. And there's a reason why I separated this out from the other videos, and that is there's a lot of differentiation happening during this phase of pregnancy. So we're talking even this little bit is between days 8 and 12, not even going much beyond that. But I don't want to go too far into what each of these layers is going to become because that's going to come in later videos. I'm going to break this down. But today, the most important part is the trophoblast. So this is the initial stages of placental development. So the embryo is going to come again next time. We're going to focus mostly on the trophoblast today. So week two, uh, we had just seen invasion of the blastocyst into the endometrium. Um, so kind of the key thing to take away from this week of pregnancy is the rule of twos. And this is an oversimplification, of course, uh, but if you can remember that in week two, the layers are in twos, you can remember what happens during week two of pregnancy. So with regard to the trophoblast, the focus of today, there are two layers of trophoblast that you need to know. And we talked about both of these layers last time, but we're going to expound on what these layers do and how they contribute to placental development. So the first layer is the cytotrophoblast, and this is blue. You'll see on the diagram that these are all color-coded, so you can look back and know which layers correspond with which area of the rule of twos. So the cytotrophoblast is the mitotically active part of the trophoblast. So this is meaning that if you're going to produce new cells to take over the trophoblast, that is where the cytotrophoblast comes in. Uh, they are going to form the primary chorionic villi, uh, and this is responsible for leading into the syncytiotrophoblast, which will cause um, the placenta to form. So the other layer, as I just mentioned, we covered in the previous video, is the syncytiotrophoblast. So the cytotrophoblast and the syncytiotrophoblast make up the two layers of the trophoblast, and what happens you, is you get these cells within the cytotrophoblast. They are mitotically active. They can divide. They have the ability to reproduce. They are going to form primary chorionic villi. And then they will stop replicating when they differentiate to syncytiotrophoblast. So this syncytiotrophoblast in orange its responsibility is to establish circulation between the uterus and the placenta. So uteroplacental circulation is the key here. So looking at the diagram, so last time leading into implantation, we had this blastocyst. We had the trophoblast in, in black. We had the inner cell mass in red. We had the uh, syncytiotrophoblast in orange and the cytotrophoblast in blue. So we're going to form these structures called lacunae, which are kind of, if you translate lacunae, it's kind of like holes um, in the structure. And these lacunae, you can see, are enveloping this red area here. And I have a few red ovals out here, which are to signify the uh, endometrial blood supply because you have blood vessels that lead into the endometrium that supply it with oxygen, as you need with any other part of your body. So the syncytiotrophoblast is going to envelop these uh, blood vessels and make them part of their own communication network. So the cytotrophoblast in blue, the syncytiotrophoblast in orange, is going to lead to this next part, which is a giant embryo. So you see this huge change between this um, single layered trophoblast and now we have these multiple cell types here. Um, so blue is the cytotrophoblast. You get these 
uh, building areas here of primary chorionic villi right before they differentiate into the syncytiotrophoblast, which will envelop the endometrial uh, blood vessels. So this is where we get the placenta from, but in these initial stages, it is going to be the cytotrophoblast and the syncytiotrophoblast. So covering the next few things that are going to happen here, of course, implantation is the mechanism of the blastocyst implanting into the endometrium. So this is only related to the trophoblast. That's all we care about with regard to implantation. When I define implantation, the, the um, embryo is irrelevant. We're just talking about the trophoblast. So this is where we get with implantation. We are done with implantation. But there are some other structures that are helpful to know because we are going to move on into these in the next few videos. And they also fit in with the rule of twos and develop at this same time frame. So, of course, the next one, we want to know what happens to the embryo. When does the embryo start? Uh, so the important thing here is that the two layers next are the embryoblast. And this is what is going to become the embryo. It becomes a bilaminar disc. So two layers, bilaminar, two layers of a disc in this stage between uh, days 8 and 12-ish, kind of between 8 and 9, we start seeing this embryoblast forming. And you get the two layers, which are the epiblast and the hypoblast. So looking at our diagram, if you look at this center here, we have the epiblast in purple and the hypoblast in green. So this, these two layers, not anything else. I know you see a lot on this picture. There's a lot going on outside here, but we don't care about that in terms of the embryo. The embryo is going to be the epiblast and the hypoblast. Only these two layers for now. That's going to change in the next episode, but just these two will form the embryo. So then the next two are two cavities the amniotic cavity, and the yolk sac. So this is related to um, the, the part that's going to become the embryo because technically there are three cavities, but we already saw one of them form, so we don't really care that much about the chorionic cavity. Um, so the two cavities that are going to develop in this stage are the amniotic cavity, which is above the epiblast, and the yolk sac, which is below the hypoblast. These are the two cavities of the embryo. You have the chorionic cavity, which is outside here, outside all of it, but that already formed, if you remember, this cavity kind of already formed here in the implantation stage. Even before that, we had the this cavity, the... Uh, cavity forming outside of the inner cell mass, which the inner cell mass becomes the epiblast and the hypoblast. I know it's a lot to take in. It will not get easier, but we will keep trudging through it. Uh, so the next part are the two layers of extra embryonic mesoderm or mesoderm, however you want to pronounce it. Mesoderm, mesoderm, same thing. So this is in black in the picture again. So we have the this kind of bulb here in the middle surrounded by another membrane which connects to the cytotrophoblast. So these are the extra embryonic mesoderm. So we have the kind of developing embryo connected by a connecting stalk, uh, which is going to end up becoming the uh, umbilical cord is going to develop from the connecting stock. This is how we're going to get nutrients in and out from the embryo here. So you can see it connects to this syncytiotrophoblast, which is receiving nutrients from the endometrial blood vessels. And then that can diffuse through the connecting stock to the growing embryo. Um, you have the uh, somatic extra embryonic mesoderm, which is the outside here connected to the primary chorionic villi and the cytotrophoblast. And then you have separating out these layers of mesoderm 
uh, you have the um, chorionic cavity, and the inner layer of the mesoderm is the visceral extra embryonic mesoderm. So this is the visceral side is going to become the fetal side of the placenta. The somatic side is going to join to become the maternal side of the placenta. Because when we look at the placenta, we're going to talk about it in kind of separate components of the uh, fetal placenta versus the maternal placenta or the, the parental placenta. So this was a lot of content with regard to the growing embryo with the trophoblast. And I'm going to keep breaking it down as we go because this gets very nitty gritty and complicated. So I hope this was interesting and I hope you all stick with me for the next episode. I will see you all in the next one.